All right, welcome to the next installment of our Beyond Mendel's Laws of Inheritance. Today we're going to talk about sex-linked traits. Now before we can talk about sex-linked traits, we need to remember our chromosomes. Remember, humans have 44 autosomes. Those are the chromosomes that both males and females have. We also have two sex chromosomes, X and Y. For instance, this here is a karyotype of a male because there's one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So sex-linked traits, rather than being found on the autosomes, like the majority of our genes, the genes are found on the sex chromosomes. Now these were first discovered by a guy named T.H. Morgan, who did research in the early 20th century, around the 1920s. He also discovered that genes are found on chromosomes, which we didn't know before him. And he worked with fruit flies, which were nice because they're small and easy to work with. And he would bombard them with x-rays so that they would get more mutations. And one day he had a mutant fly who was born, a male fly with white eyes. So he decided to breed this male fly with white eyes with a female fly who had red eyes. Now, in case you're not familiar with fruit flies, red eye is the normal color for female flies. Anyways, he bred this white-eyed male with a red-eyed female, and as you might expect with a sort of dominant recessive relationship, all of the offspring, male and female, had red eyes. But then in the F2 generation, we saw something kind of strange. Instead of the normal pattern of 3 to 1 that we would see, we had 100% red-eyed girls, females, and half red-eyed males and half white-eyed males. So, for some reason, with this particular gene, the sex of the fly mattered, and he had never seen this before. Now what he expected was our normal dominant recessive relationship. So if we had two big R's, the normal dominant red eyes, and two little R's, the white eyes, we would expect that in the F1 generation that all the flies would have red eyes. And then after that generation bred in the F2, we'd end up with that classic relationship where we'd have three to one. We'd have our homozygous dominant, our two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive white-eyed fly. And of course, sex wouldn't matter, but that's not what happened. So we need to look more at how sex chromosomes work. Now this is true in humans and also actually true in fruit flies. We have two sex chromosomes, X and Y. Now we've learned before that of course if you have two X chromosomes you are female. And that means you actually have one more X chromosome than you really need because if you're a male you only have one X chromosome. Now if everyone needed two, males would be out of luck because they only have one. But males don't have that backup X the way females do. They just have a Y. Now the Y makes them a male, which is great, but it doesn't do the same things an X chromosome does. It's actually much smaller and has fewer genes. In fact, the Y chromosome basically only has the genes for maleness. And if you think about it, that makes sense because women don't have it. So if it was really important and had really important genes on it, women wouldn't have those very important genes. Now the X chromosome men and women have, so it doesn't just have female genes on it. It has all sorts of genes, and you can see in this picture here that mutations on this chromosome can call, cause all kinds of diseases. In fact, it's about 60 different diseases in humans. So I have an analogy here to help you think about how this works. It's my iPhone analogy. Now all of you guys like to play Flappy Bird in class, and in order to do that you need a phone. Now, if you have a working phone, life is good. Men have a working X chromosome, life is good. Women, life is good. Now if men have one working X chromosome and a Y, it doesn't really matter because they have their X chromosome. It's like a working phone. It's fine. They can play games on it. Now women actually have that backup, but you don't actually need two phones, right? You can only play use one phone at a time, and generally speaking, women don't need those two X chromosomes. Now what happens if an X chromosome has a broken gene, if it's not functioning the way it should? Well, that's going to make you sad, right? You can't play your games on your phone if it's broken. And men don't have a backup because remember, Y chromosomes don't do much. They don't have all the power of the phone. They can't play the games. They're just kind of there saying, hey, be a boy. 
But women, they don't have to worry because they still have a backup X chromosome. So even if one of them is broken, they can still do everything they need to do. Just like someone who has two phones that one is broken, they can still play games on the working phone and they'll still be happy. So men don't carry a backup. That's the problem. Now let's go back into the flies. So what actually happened here was not a normal dominant recessive relationship. It was on the X and Y chromosomes. When we do this, our notation, you can see it's called superscript. We draw the, the letters as superscript on the X's and Y's so that we can see that the gene is carried on one of the sex chromosomes. So we have our normal female who's carrying two dominant genes on their X chromosome and a white-eyed male who has a recessive white-eyed gene on his X chromosome. Now when we see their offspring, we have two female flies in the F1 and they're both carriers of the white-eyed gene. Now the male flies in the F1 generation are normal because they got their X chromosomes from their mom and their mom had only normal X chromosomes. So all of our flies here have red eyes. But in our F2 generation, because all the females are carriers, even though the male is normal, the male flies in this F2 generation are going to get the X chromosomes from their mom. So half of them are going to have red eyes, but half of them are going to be white eyed. You can see the females that they all have normal eyes, but actually half of the females are carriers. But we then see that relationship that Morgan saw where 100% of the females in the F2 have red eyes and half the males have white eyes. Now, how does this relate to the pedigrees we've been looking at? Well, when you see a pedigree that's an X-linked recessive trait, and you may notice I use X-linked and sex-linked kind of interchangeably. That's because most of the time X-linked means, sex-linked means X-linked because the X chromosome has more genes on it than the Y chromosome. Anyways, in an X-linked recessive pedigree, you will see that the trait will always come from the mother's side of the family because the mother is the carrier of the trait. And because of that, because the women are only carriers and don't show the trait, the males are going to be the ones who have the phenotype. Now, women can, of course, get this trait if they get it from both sides of their family, but that means their dad has to have the trait. So if it's a mild trait, like it's not really a bad disease, but just an unusual trait like colorblindness, then a female could get it from both sides of her family because colorblind men have children all the time. But if it's a disease trait that can actually, like DMD, that will kill someone young, they're unlikely to have kids before they pass away. So for that reason, diseases that are on the X chromosome are really found almost entirely in males because they don't usually have children so they could pass it to their daughters. But traits that aren't diseases, just sort of unusual phenotypes like colorblindness, those can be passed to daughters and occasionally there are colorblind females, but they have to have colorblindness on both sides of the family. So here's an example so we can practice our Punnett squares with sex-linked traits. Hemophilia is a disease which you, blood does not clot properly, so you just bleed uncontrollably. And the clotting factor gene that makes your blood clot properly is on the X chromosome. So this is an X-linked recessive trait like we've been talking about. So I'd like you to try to draw a Punnett square to figure out what would be the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring of a male who has normal blood clotting and a female who's a carrier of the hemophilia allele. I'll give you a moment here to draw your Punnett square and try to figure it out. All right, did you do it? All right, let's look at our answer. So our female, our mom, she's a carrier, which means she has one normal X chromosome and one X chromosome with hemophilia. Our dad is normal clotting, so we know his X chromosome is normal. When we draw our Punnett square, we can see that one of our girls will get a normal X chromosome from both parents, so she's going to be normal. One of our guys will get a normal X chromosome from the mom, so he'll be normal. So we have 25% Girl, normal girls, 25% normal boys in the offspring so far. And then one of our girls, she's going to get a normal X from her dad, but a hemophilia X from her mom, so she'll be a carrier of the trait. And our last offspring, this last boy, he's going to get a Y from his dad, because boys always get Ys from their dad, and the hemophilia X chromosome from his mom, so he, unfortunately, is going to have hemophilia. 
So as you can see, all of our females are healthy, although half of them are carriers. And then half of our males are healthy and half are hemophiliacs. So hopefully you got that and thank you for watching.